Good morning all. Today the topic is Features of Classical Theory of Development A Mathematical Expressions The main proponents of the Classical Theory of Development are Adam Smith, David Ricardo and Thomas Robert Malthus. Though the classical economists differ on various development issues, the essence of their approach is the same. So in this class, we are going to present the classical theory of development in mathematical forms. So the basic principles of the classical theory of development can be enumerated under several propositions. So we are going to look forward the first proposition. According to the classical writers or the proponents, the output of an economy depends on certain factors. The basic principles of classical theory of development can be presented under several propositions. So we are going to analyze one by one the various propositions of classical theory. The first proposition is the production function. According to the classical writers, the output of an economy or production of an economy depends on several factors. The main factors are the labor force, the capital stock, the land availability and the level of technology. So they represented the production function as follows. So this is a production function here Q is the output L labor force K denotes the capital stock T denotes the technology. N denotes land availability. Here out of these factors, four factors L, K, T, N, only the factor land availability is fixed one because the uh, proportion of land cannot be increased automatically. All the other factors, labor force, capital stock and level of technology can be varied in the production process. Next is about the proposition 2 that is technological progress depends on the level of investment. In the first proposition, we have seen that for economic development, increase in the productive capacity is inevitable. For subsequent increase in the productive capacity, technological level should be or technological application should be interpreted. So the classical uh, writers made the mathematical equation as T equal to F of I that is here T denotes the technology and I denotes investment. So this is direct relationship which shows that the level of technology depends on the level of investment. Further, the level of investment depends upon the 
capital accumulation and saving so this is a proposition to that is the technological progress depends on the level of investment the equation is as follows t equal to f of i where t denotes the technology level and i denotes the investment level so for the investment to happen there should be capital accumulation and mobilization of savings in the economy okay so far we have analyzed the production function technological progress that depends on the level of investment that is for the economic development to happen there should be increase in the output level and for the output or the productivity capacity to expand technological progress should be inevitable so next proposition number 3 is that investment depends on the profit profits so in an economy all private and uh, foreign investments are profit motivated so according to the classical writers uh, the term investment means the net addition to capital stock so they combine the equation as i equal to delta k equal to f of r this is a third equation so the proposition 3 states that investment depends on the profits so for economic development output should be enhanced in the first one and for subsequent increase in productivity technological application should be implied and technological application depends on the investment for investment to happen there should be profit in the economy so overall the level of invest investment in economy depends upon the net addition to capital stock which hereby implies it is a function of the return on profits so this is about the third proposition next is the proposition 4 the proposition 4 states that profits depend on the supply of labor and level of technology so in the classical period we can infer that the main economic activity is agriculture so as per the malthusian theory uh, malthusian theory with population growth the demand for agricultural uh, land increases so this creates a burden on the agricultural land and this leads to the law of diminishing returns in agricultural fields which further raises the labor cost and lowers the profit level so here in the proposition 4 the classical writers in introduced that profit depends upon the supply of labor and level of technology so they represented the equation as r equal to f of l t that is l denotes the labor supply and t denotes the technological level so for the output to expand and for for the economy to attain economic development population should be maintained at a stabilized level then only the aim of the product production activity can be attained so this is about the proposition for that is profit depend on the supply of labor and level of technology so next is about the proposition 5 from 
the first proposition to the fourth proposition we have inferred that technology is the essential criteria for the economic development or productive capacity so next comes the proposition number 5 which states that size of labor force depends upon the size of wage fund so it means that it is the known as the iron law of wages so this proposition is commonly referred in the classical writings as the iron law of wages which states that population growth depends upon the wage fund so the wage fund is the total amount mobilized by the capitalist or the uh, farmer in the production activity so if the wage fund is greater the uh, labor force will be greater so this is a direct relationship which states that the labor force depends on the size of the wage fund created or accumulated so here comes the fifth equation as l equal to f of w that is uh, the fifth proposition or uh, equation in the classical writings so if the wage fund is raised then proportionality the labor supply or the population growth will also be raised so this is the criteria of the proposition number five so far we have completed the five proposition q equal to f of k l n t that is a proposition one proposition two states that technology is a function of the level of investment and in next one investment depends on the level of profits that is i equal to delta k equal to f of r and next one the profit depends upon the level of uh, supply of labor and level of technology and the proposition 5 which states that the size of labor force depends upon the wage funds so next we come across the proposition number 6 which states that size of wage fund depends upon the level of investment so in the last proposition we have seen that labor force depend on the wage fund that is if the wage fund is larger there, there will be greater supply of uh, labor force so uh, in the proposition number six the classical writers infer that the wage fund depends on the savings of the capitalist which, which further find its investment so wage fund is close related to savings of the capitalist and so uh, we can make the equation as w equal to f of i that is wage fund depends upon the total wage fund depends upon the total investment made in the economy by the capitalist and the agriculturist in an entire year so this is a proposition number six lastly we are coming to the closing equation so i am going to write down the all six equations and finally to the concluding equation so these are the all six equations we have analyzed so i am going to write in a simplified manner the first for economic development increase in output is inevitable for 
increase in productivity the level of technology should be increased or new scientific discoveries in uh, industrial activity or agricultural activity is uh, essential and if technological uh, progress is made it should depend on the level of investment in the economy that is the net addition to the capital stock so investment further depends on the level of profit that is r that is uh, the labor force and uh, technological progress uh, the level of profits the capitalist or the industrialist accumulates further depends on the wage fund created or wage fund mobilized if the wage fund is greater the level of labor force or population growth will be higher and this cyclical process will repeated again and again until all the excess labor supply is as hosted so now we are going to write down the final equation that is a proposition number 7 which states that q equal to r plus w that is output uh, according to classical economist output depends upon the profit and wages or wage fund mobilized wage fund mobilized so this is all about the classical theory of economic development hope all of you have gained understanding about the about the equations and interpretations of the model thank you